using services and volumes with pods. In this section, we're going to learn how to use services and volumes with pods. We're going to start by learning how to use labels and selectors. Next, we'll learn how to create services. We'll take a quick detour and learn how to use environment variables in specifications. We'll then learn how to use secrets and config maps. In the last two sections, we'll learn how to use volumes and persistent volumes. Labels and selectors. In this video, we're going to learn about labels and selectors. We'll start by learning how labels are used. We'll then learn how to format labels. Next, we'll learn about the two types of selectors, equality-based and set-based. Finally, we'll learn how to use annotations to store metadata about a resource. We've seen labels a few times in the previous section. Let's get into the details of what labels are and how they're used. Labels are key value pairs. They can be attached to resources such as pods and deployments. Kubernetes doesn't attach any meaning to them directly. It's up to you to define what they mean. Labels can provide useful identifying metadata for you, but they also are the core way of grouping resources. The key names and values are alphanumeric strings that are less than or equal to 63 characters. Only upper or lowercase letters A through Z, numbers, dashes, underscores, or dots are allowed. They must start and end with a letter or number. Keys may be prefixed with a DNS subdomain followed by a slash. Labels which are added by third-party tools must be prefixed with a domain. The prefix kubernetes.io is reserved for Kubernetes components. Keys must be unique per resource. In other words, you can't have a label named app that is set to web and www. Let's create a handful of pods that have labels set. The labels are set with the labels subkey. The web-prod pod has two labels. The env key is set to prod and the dept key is set to hr. The other pods have similar labels set. Rather than go through all of the pods individually, Let's go take a look at a table that shows the pods and the labels that are being set. The complete specification for these pods is in the source bundle for this video. We've already seen the labels for the web-prod pod. The web-dev pod has the env key set to dev, and the web-qa pod has the env key set to qa. All of the web pods have the dept label set to hr. The proxy pod has the env label set to prod, but doesn't have a DEPT label set. We'll come back to these pods in a moment. Selectors are how Kubernetes searches for group resources. There are two types of selector requirements, equality-based and set-based. You may specify multiple requirements. Each requirement is separated by a comma. A resource must specify all of the requirements to be included in the selected resources. Equality-based selectors are the easiest to understand. They simply ensure that a key matches or does not match the specified value. The requirement foo equals bar matches resources that have the label foo set to the value of bar. You can use either single or double equal signs to denote equality. You can denote inequality with exclamation point equal sign. For example, the requirement foo bang equal bar matches the resource where the label foo does not equal bar. Set-based selectors will match if a value is in or not in a set. You can also match resources that have a specified key, no matter what the value is. Matching a value in a set uses the keyword in. You specify the key, the word in, and a list of values in parentheses. For example, the requirement env in open parenthesis dev comma test close parenthesis will match if the resource has the label env set to dev or test. The operator not in matches values that are not in the list. This means that the requirement env not in prod comma test will match any resource where the env label is not prod or test. Your requirement can also list a key name by itself, which means that it will match any resource that has the key no matter what the value is. You can also prefix the key name with an exclamation point to find resources that do not have the specified key. Let's create all of the pods from the previous example. Now we can search for specific pods based on the labels. This is done by passing the selector expression to the dash L flag to kubectl get pods. Let's start by listing all of the pods that have the env label set to prod. 
the query matches the proxy and web-prod pods. Now let's find all of the pods where the env label is not dev. This shows all of the pods except for web-dev since that was the only pod that had the env label set to dev. Let's find all of the pods that have the DEPT key set. This is done by listing just the key name. This will list all of the web pods, but not the proxy pod because it doesn't have the DEPT key set. In the last example, let's list all of the pods that have the ENV label set to prod or QA and have the DEPT label set to HR. This shows the web-prod and web-QA pods. The proxy pod has the env tag set to prod, but it doesn't have the DEPT key, so it's not listed. Remember this example from video 1.6? This deployment creates three nginx pods. Let's go back and take a closer look at the labels. Down in the pod template, we have the label app set to nginx. Up in the deployment definition, we have a selector set to match labels which does a simple equality match. Let's change this deployment so that it uses a selector expression instead. We've replaced match labels with match expressions. It takes a list of expressions. Each expression has a key named key that is the label key that we want to match. The operator key specifies the set based operator. It can be in, not in, exists, or does not exist. If the operator is in or not in, we can specify the values key, which takes an array of possible values. Multiple expressions can be specified. A resource must match all of them to be included in the selector. Labels are designed to be used for identification, not for storing metadata. However, there are times when you need to store that information. Kubernetes solves that problem with annotations. Like labels, annotations are key value pairs. The keys are strings and follow the same rules as labels. Annotation values are not limited by the rules that govern labels. They can be anything from contact information for the development team to a JSON structure that describes build information. You might also link to the internal documentation or bug tracker for your application. If you've written your own tooling to manage Kubernetes, you can use annotations to store configuration or deployment metadata. This is a specification for a simple Nginx pod. I've added the annotation subkey to the metadata key. There are two annotations, type and website. Notice that there are lots of strange characters such as spaces, colons, and slashes in the value. Let's create the pod. Let's look at the description of the pod. We'll pipe it through less because the output is long. There are our two annotations. There's also one that kubectl creates, which contains the last configuration. Notice that that one contains a JSON document. In this video, we learned about labels and selectors. We started by learning how labels are used. Then we learned how to format labels. Next, we learned about the two types of selectors, equality-based and set-based. Finally, we learned how to use annotations to store metadata about a resource.